This is the story of a journey along one of the longest and strangest rivers on earth. Almost all the greatest rivers of the world, uh, the Yangtze, the Yellow River, the Mississippi, the Amazon, the Irrawaddy, the Indus, they nourish the heart of their nation. It's hard to imagine India uh, without the Ganges or Egypt without the Nile. But the Amur, which at 3,000 miles is the 10th longest river in the world, draining a basin twice the size of Pakistan, is a border. It's an immense frontier. It's a divide. Here, far from the Western gaze, these two great communist giants, ex-communist giants, Russia and China, um, collide together and find their limits. Yet the further source of the river is the little Onon, which rises in neither country but in the mountains of northeastern Mongolia, where it is known as the Holy Mother Onon, a female river. But the marshlands in this area are treacherous. I started out with a guide and two horsemen um, who had gained by uh, a painful negotiations um, and uh, with a permit that was unusual to find the source of the river. But the marshlands um, involved the horses in such trouble. They fell, they floundered into, their, into the marshes up to their withers. They panicked um, that I emerged after some 10 days um, with a fractured ankle and two broken ribs. But I followed the river on over the Russian border into South Siberia and where here it becomes no longer the Holy Mother Onon but Russia's little father Amur. It has a change of gender. And after many, good many weeks of travel I found I arrived at a place where literally the Russian and Chinese borders met and I was looking down an enormous trajectory of barbed wire barriers two endless fences with raked earth between them and watchtowers above, where I realised um, this whole area was one of ancient trouble. The Chinese have never forgotten that the Russians seized all these lands north of the Amur from them by unequal treaty, as they call it, in the mid-19th century. And I felt that probably I would be prohibited from travelling along the Chinese shore at all. But when I got over there, I found strangely that there were a few watchtowers, but nobody checked me. I went by um, ramshackle buses for 600 miles along the south side of the river. And this is a land of, of potential trouble because of the antipathy um, between the Russians and the Chinese here and the huge disparity of population. The Chinese um, population there in the provinces abutting the river, um, about 110 million. The Russians, a mere 2 million, um, suspicious, and a population that's declining. I was told, in fact, that the Chinese side would be bristling with arms, but, but it wasn't so. The journey is hazards. Um, were plenty, but um, I was mainly concerned with the marshlands and with the Russian um, uh, inhibition about allowing people to travel in remote areas of the country. I was arrested twice, once by the Russians and once by the Chinese, but um, they simply worried that I was in areas that foreigners never normally went to, and I was eventually released. The most difficult moment, I think, came when I found myself by pure chance in the middle of an enormous 300,000-man uh, Russian-Chinese military exercise from which I extracted myself only with the help of a friendly monk. The furthest um, point of China is a place, a little town called Fuyuan. And from here it's possible to take a boat back across Russia, which I was able to do. And then the river for another 6,600 miles wanders again to the north and enters the Pacific at the Okos Sea. At this point, um, 
Russia had an extraordinary imperial dream, a, a fantasy. In the mid 19th century, they imagined that this was going to be their access to the Pacific and to all the riches of commerce that it promised. Irrespective of the fact that for half the year, the Amur River is blocked with ice and for the rest of the time, it's subject to shifting shallows and shelves which make it almost unnavigable for any um, large craft. So within a few years, that great fantasy faded away. And now you travel, as I did, over what seems to be a vast inland sea as the river near its end, crossed by almost no boats at all. I went in the company of Russian poachers and fishermen who took me at last to Nikolaevsk, the Vandan port, where the Amur River at last finds its axis into the Pacific.